are here this evening and we are going to be part of a, a lovely show with Mr. Philip Edward Alexander. Yes, well-known publicist and um, a writer, a blogger, a columnist, a social activist, talk show host, founder of the Jericho Project, and a political leader of the Progressive Empowerment Party. Welcome, Mr. Philip Alexander. Mama Coco, thank you so much for having me. I apologize for how I appear. We've been trying to update our software to keep up with this program. We use VMix Call and we use Zoom. We use um, WhatsApp for our um, shows. We've never done this stream yard before. So it's a bit of a challenge um, for us. It, it required full updates on the iOS. So we're working on all of that right now, but thanks a lot for helping us um, and, and for waiting. So thank you for having me. Well, let us welcome Mr. Philip Alexander. I, I, I have Mr. Philip Alexander on, on my show this evening for many reasons. I have been following this this um, this man for three years plus. He he has not given me any clue that he knew I was around until about I think last year. But I used to be following him, listening to him, and asking myself, "Who is this guy? Who is this guy with so much knowledge? Who is this guy that could bring people?" To understand that politics is more than just going up for an election and looking for a seat and politics is like a teaching experience you know and um i became excited and i wanted to know more from and of mr philip alexander mr philip alexander i just want to say something here to you today and a lot of people might ask well they're asking who is this woman that philip going to do this interview with you understand me <laughs> who is this lady your friend gary abud so when i saw abud i started to get a little scared because i tell myself i'm touching that area where somebody in like me or Knowing Mr. Philip, I wonder who is this person who's saying that they look up on YouTube and they couldn't find me and you know what I'm saying. Well, Mr. Gary Abood, this is me. I am Mama Coco, but my real name and title is Cora Pante. I hail from the village of Argyle, Tobago, and I'm a citizen of the Twin Republic of Trinidad and Tobago. I wear my flag proudly. I live my life as a Trinidadian a Trinbegonian, wherever I go, I walk with my flag. I'm an excited person. And when I see something good, I like to make sure that I'm part of goodness. Because see, goodness doesn't lead us anywhere. Goodness follows us all the days of our lives. Indeed. And we will promise a quality lifestyle because of goodness. Tonight, um, before I welcome Mr. Philip Alexander, I want to explain to some people who believe by saying that um, we shouldn't be people who pray, or no, we shouldn't be people who dealing with politics at the same time. Well, the both of them work together for good. And this evening, I want to introduce Mr. Philip Alexander and reintroduce Mr. Philip Alexander. To, to the people of Trinidad, he's popular. He's a, a figure that ruffled a lot of feathers and a lot of people come around just to ruffle his feathers. So here we are this evening, Mr. Philip Edward Alexander. Who are you? Mama, I wanna tell you, I'm uh, fighting up here to get a link to share to 
all the people, we have 44,000 followers. And, and my WhatsApp sees twice people asking, where the feed, where the feed, because we real promote that the show happening tonight. So uh, Satish now finally gave me the link and I'm just sending it out to quiet that down. Yeah. Um, I want to say that since you asked for this interview, I've been excited. And all of the problems that happened trying to get the show up tonight, it, it destabilized me and in a good way because there's a reason why when you ask me today, you wanted to send the questions. And yes. I tell you, I don't want to know the questions in advance um, because I like to be able to answer off the cuff. I want to always be able to be authentic. And I told you that, right? Yes. But tonight, I feel like I am juggling chainsaws, riding a unicycle across a tightrope on the show because I am so out of my element. <laughs> the feed I have is crazy. And um, all right, so let's get down. I've shared the link. I put this phone on silent and give you 101% of all of my attention. Going forward from here, I'll this phone over. They won't stop. Um, so my first question is, who is Philip Ed Edward Alexander? But uh, firstly, I want to say that I am I'm, I'm going to be introducing you and reintroducing you to the citizens of Trinidad and Tobago. Because Tobago will be an introduction tonight. I'm introducing you to the people of Tobago. And I appreciate that. And I am going to give you the chance. For the benefit of you, who is Philip? For the benefit of your viewers, though, do I call you Mama Coco or Cora or Miss Pantin? What, what, oh, what you could go with Miss Pantin or Sarah, I, yeah. <laughs> yes, or Mama Coco. Say Mama Coco because I, I like that. New but... page. This is a new page I have established, and um, no, I like it, I I'm, like it very much. Yes, a lot of people, a, a lot of people, you know, accept the invitation, so I have a crew that's building so you can use the name or you can and your and your crew yeah. very professional Thank calm you so during much. storms i am very impressed i'm sure satish and pep media will as well i think we will do well working together in the future um you keep asking who's philip Edward alexander and i want to tell you that i am just another person um mama coco i am a happy content, peaceful, successful man. All, all of my problems, all of my worries, all of my stresses, all of my concerns are politics. In my personal life, I live blissful happiness. I have a loving family, two beautiful children that I enjoy I, if there were 25 more hours in the day to spend with my son and my daughter i would spend it with them i have never i have never been able to thank god enough for those two children joshua and isabella are literally my beating heart so you have you have teenagers in between or all no. of them are no just josh just the two bookends now and, and I want to say this, I, how long how long your show runs? I don't want to waste time. How long does your show run? I want to tell you this, but I don't want to ramble on. It's up to you. I think we're going to finish by seven. We okay. could finish by seven. No, no, I, you have me as long as you want me. I just say it. Right? <laughs> oh, awesome. <laughs> awesome, anyway. Mr. Philip. Awesome. But you know, you have jumped the gun a little bit here for me. I apologize. Oh, Philip. Philip is a father, a son. A, a, a brother, you see, a husband. I, I, I do well as the interviewer, not as the interviewee in situations like this. And that's why I wanted this so much. Thank I want to learn how to be the interviewee. Mama Coco, I don't, unlike other politicians who will script lies for you and tell you what you want to hear, I'll tell you the truth. 
No day goes by in my life that I don't have two different types of messages on Facebook. One, somebody that was somebody that was supporting me hard, no longer supporting me from today because I touch on an issue. It's like when George Floyd was killed. Tell me about the Philip before. I want the child. I want the child that grow into a man. And then I, we will get into what people are doing to you right now. No, no, no. I was, you just gonna to say, I was just going to say, there, there are two types of messages I get every day. The people who won't follow anymore and the people who who so happy that they found me and that they can't believe that there is somebody like me out there. There are two types of people always in every situation. Um, tonight, I had to fall out, I want to use that word, with people who had an event last night and the Attorney General and Rudal Munilal and a bunch of people were packed up on a stage. Now, when people sent me that picture, they outraged and rightly so, because I'm the person who made it stink when the little children from Kokorit were arrested because a picture was taken from multi-million dollar 1% Bayside powers to say, look, Kokorit children bathing in the sea. Come and get them out and they're breaking the law. So when Bunilal and Al-Rawi and the rest of them climb up on a stage together, nobody wearing no mask, no social distancing, nobody observing the law, five people is the limit. I put them on blast. The people who organized the event, three of the people are my friends on Facebook, all three vexed and the other. I don't know who organized the event. I had to tell them. Outside of Munilal and Al-Rawi in that picture, I don't know anybody else on the stage. All I am talking about is the injustice and the wrongdoing because right is right and wrong is wrong. And if it is the same law for the little children in Sea Lots and the same law for the, for the lady up in Mount Hope, outside Shiba, police come and arrest her because she had too many people in the bar. How this happened? So when I put them on blast, they blast me, no problem. And they tell me that the law does not apply to private events. So I call the commissioner of police and I say, is this true? He said, you wouldn't believe it. You keep saying it's a bullshit law. It's a bullshit law because it doesn't apply to private residences. If you could put 50,000 people inside your house, no social distancing, no mass, you could do that. Our law in Toronto be a crap. So when they find out that they were correct, they went to town. But I just found out that it was a fundraising event that sold tickets. So even though it is a private residence, it became a public event. It was not a private event. The law is stupid and it is silly. And to the mass of people who saw the picture of Faris and Murilal and the rest of the people on that stage, they outraged. To the people who had their fundraiser, and that's the problem with Trinidadians, right? We want you to fix all the wrong in Trinidad, you know. But don't fix the wrong, we do it. That Leave that wrong alone. If we want to break all the laws, let me break all the laws. You go and fix the other people who are breaking the laws. And that's what pissed people off with me. Because I do not see it. <laughs> Here we go, Mr. Philip. You are on, you are you, you are on this show and I am going to you you said you said that you want to know how you want to learn how to be the interviewee. Yeah. And you want to because you see the, the quality of interview that you were trained to to really do is not the type that we are on this show for today. I want people. I just get a message. No, Stop hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I'm talking politics. Follow, follow, follow her lead. Talk yes. about your childhood. Yes. Like, oh, that's not me. That's hold not on, me. Never try to sell me. You, you know, you know, one thing I'll I try. never like, one thing I never like when you are being interviewed on radio and on TV is that you have to always be begging them, let me finish, let me finish, let me, I don't want that. Okay. We are doing great. All right. I love your audience. And I, and I don't like what is happening around with you. You see, the quality of Philip that they're bringing out is not the quality Philip I want to introduce mm. and to reintroduce. You see, I want... I want, I want to deal with a form of, a form of gravitas. Mm -hmm. You understand me? Let's go with something. Somebody said, a message come, follow the lead, follow the lead. Follow the lead. Because I want you to be seen as a man with dignity. A man that moving for success. A man that has quality to lead. And a man, a leader, must be able 
to listen. So let me breathe again. And let me welcome Philip Alexander. The human that he is. That people does not allow you to be. Because you're not allowing them the chance to make you become the leader that you're supposed to be. Your qualities that you have in you, from an academical point of view, you have qualities to be a leader. But first you have to be a listener. A great listener in the, in the, we're taking it though. I know you come up, you hear you come to talk. I want you to talk, but you have to follow up. I keep I taking off the glasses because I'm reflecting all these lights that I have. Yes, take off the glasses for now. You don't have to it, read it, me. Reflecting me. All you don't have to read me with a glasses. Good. Sorry. So, what it is like to grow up as Philip Edward Alexander? Okay, but I would like to say one more thing before I start that. Could I? Breathe, breathe first. Breathe, brother. Breathe. I'm breathing. Yes. I got to say one more thing, right? For all of the time that I have been alive, I have seen politicians come across as slippery. And I've seen them try to sell an image that is not real. And I understand I ended up doing communications, public relations. I'm a spin doctor and I know how to make things appear different. <laughs> I like the word, I like the word spin doctor, but you know what was going on a little while? We were spinning out a country. Yes. Well, let's get back. Yes. What was it like to grow up as Philip Edward Alexander? Okay. I grew up in Woodbrook in Trinidad, O'Connor Street. Woodbrook, Trinidad, and my best friends growing up were Colin Young, Danielle Kaulessa, Bruce Pushett, Leonard Edgel. And that should tell you that I grew up in a place, Leonard Edgel, white Trinidadians, Bruce Pouchette, afro Chinese, Danel Kaulisa, indo Trini, Colin Young, separated by a wall, Chinese Chin Chinese, right? But we yeah. never saw ourselves like that. In fact, I, I have a book I wrote called O'Connor Street and it's about growing up. In What's the name of your book? O'Connor Street. I, I've not finished it to publish it yet. When Tim Gopi Singh was Minister of Education, he said he read it and he said that that would be a nice book to put in the public system. So I thought that after I finished politics, I'd finish it. But growing up in O'Connor Street as a little boy, um, what, 50, 45, 46 years ago, I'm 53 now, um, we grew up in a plural society. That Woodbrook and anybody that you ever ever meet that came from Woodbrook will tell you that Syrians, Indians, Chinese, know white, Woodbrook. Uh, Indians, everybody Nobody lived together normal. Everybody lived together normal. Woodbrook, so up, Woodbrook have the people that you always talk about, you 1%. I'm talking, go ahead. It have everybody. It have everybody in Woodbrook. So, so growing up in Woodbrook, I got a uh, a vision, a version of Trinidad and Tobago that that I had that, that I had to change when I became a teenager and we moved out of Woodbrook and I moved into West Moorings. And I thought I saw a different Trinidad and Tobago than I knew as a little boy growing up in Woodbrook. Um, but Woodbrook, we I spent a lot of time in the church. I was an acolyte. I was in the youth group. I was in the choir. I was in the I, I did confirmation first communion. Catholic or, or um what religion it was? Roman Catholic. I grew up Roman Catholic Roman. and I grew up the, 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 the church was in the next street, St. Teresa's Church. So yes. we, we, we and two of my sisters, I have three sisters, one just passed away. Two of my sisters went to St. Teresa's, but we grew up in the St. Teresa's church family. So we spent a lot of time there in, in, in church. We, um, we, we, we lived as a community. Clive Panton, I don't know if you... I know Clive Panton. Right, well, Clive was the firebrand in Woodbrook. He, leaded, he, led, leaded. he led the Woodbrook Action Committee. And this was before he got into politics. We, the, Woodbrook people stood together and took care of each other and took care of business. When the 
they did the they did this thing in the country where they they put down salt water mains and they left Woodbrook in a mess and Clive organized street by street with the Woodbrook fire services and we cleaned our streets. I mean, we were doing these things and, and that was the first piece of politics I ever got into and I didn't know it was politics because one Sunday morning I woke up and everybody in my house was outside on the pavement and if everybody in my house outside on the pavement, because there were a lot of us in our homes there and if everybody outside on the pavement, something going on, I rushed outside to see what's going on. As a little boy, 10 years old, to see a fire truck coming down the road with crowds of people and firemen spraying the road and people scrubbing the road and climbing on a bullhorn telling the residents come out and help i run inside grab my mother broom run outside and help sweep the street 10 years old get what was from. happening what was happening there we were cleaning the streets they were cleaning the streets and 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 they were that's what they were doing and it was it was an exciting thing to be a part of and 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 i'm just telling you that that's what the, the experience that I had growing up in Woodbrook is, it, is what underpins my politics. I want that for the whole of Trinidad and Tobago. I've always wanted for Trinidad and Tobago that everybody helped everybody without asking a question. I mean, it was it was literally community life. So that's what I knew. And it's inculcated into me. The Trinidad that I live in now is such a huge... No, 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 now we're rushing, we're rushing. The boy, Edward, you went to school somewhere. You went to school. What school you went to? Well, it must be Catholic school. No, actually, I went to Romilly's prep school on Anna Street. Cleopatra Romilly. She was a PNM senator. I didn't know what that was, but it sounded important. <laughs> she was a PNM senator. Her husband, Oswald um, Romilly, was the principal of the school. Um, Miss Villamera, Miss Lafleur, I can't remember the third, I can't remember the second. Miss Villamera was first, Miss Lafleur, Miss Jones, Miss Pigott, and then Mr. Romilly. That was the classes that you went through to get. Yeah. That was standard one, standard two. It was somebody's yard that was divided by Blackmore. <laughs> by by a mango tree. <laughs> no, no, they, they, it was a shed. They had a shed, and each class was divided by blackboards. When I when I end up in Saint Mary's School, well, that's, a, that's so many. I, I I remember that too. That um, the, the 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 partition was a blackboard. The partition was a blackboard. Yeah, so you have to be quiet. You have to, to be quiet. And if you are a fast learner, you will start to learn other classes work. Because you you finish doing your so long uh, so long ago that you start to to get advanced by just proximity, so so Mr. Alexander you 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 went to you went to elementary school prep school elementary school, and then you move on to high school. What what, what it was like for high school for you and 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 is there anyone right now that you still have a friend or work with? that you went to high school with right now? All of my friends that were my, what I call my best friends from very young, if they're still alive, they're still my friends today. And we've been lifelong friends. Anyone, have, in, anyone in, in power that you could, you know, get information from or, or working with that alongside or, or anybody like that you have with you right Would now? It, like in politics? Yeah. No. I no. I mean, I have a lot of support. I have teachers. Um, Jerome Stone. I went primary school. I went before I went baby school with Jerome and his two sisters, Natalie and Carolyn. And his mom, Marie, Maureen Stone, know me since I was three, two or three. And she's a foundation member of the Progressive You were, you were, you were still in diaper? Baby school. This was before oh, okay. this was before school. This was school before school. And 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 Rhett Gordon, Rhett Gordon, Ken Gordon's son, Rhett and I used to exchange lunches every day. Because Rhett used to like what my mother sandwiches for some reason. And we would exchange sandwiches. Red see this now, he will cuss me for saying it. And, and Red is somebody that I'm mean, big in the printing business and a well-known guy in general. It's very successful. Um, th there are a lot of people that um, are 
that have known me from the start, my dean of form three, my English literature teacher, uh, my my priest. Still, I, I have messages to return WhatsApp. My, Who was my, your priest? Father Harold Imamsha was the last priest that I called priest that blessed something that we were doing. And he, he and I speak regularly. He's a person that when he, he blessed my political launch, he said we must be servants who lead and leaders who serve and, and i've never forgotten that because it resonated perfectly yes it, but, if, if it's if it's one thing with um anglican and catholic school they will speak to you with spiritual language and overtone that sometimes right now in your life you could reminisce and go back right into that space now tell us about your high school um saint mary's college it was a shock after Romilly's and this is why and I remember that I remember the shock of big school as opposed to small school so you um, know, before we go further because then people people of your age and well well mine I'm older than you are and um so that's why I'm more experienced than you are in certain things I have seen more moons under the sun under the under heaven and what I have to say and ask you is that did, did you enter a private high school? Did, did, did they pay for you, or you did the, the kind of exam like me, common entrance? How well, yes, yeah. Com well, no, common entrance. It was common entrance, but it's the yes, same. What's common entrance? Yeah, but it's the same nonsense, and that's what I'm saying to you. The shock of moving from baby from 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 small school to big school, because my school, Romilly's, I tell you, somebody garage, three classes in somebody garage, and and. The size of St. Mary's College, I think I lost every day. Why that? Why that? Why that was in the modern time? Because I, I, why you had to be in somebody's garage? Well, I mean, what time of your life that was? No, what time you in, in Woodbrook? Yeah, but looking back on it now, I have, I have. Were they building a high school? A no, 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 no. We weren't rich. We weren't rich. Uh, the people who were our community, we weren't rich people. And and looking back on it now, I have the greatest respect for my father, who, looking back on it now, I understand how much he, how much difficulties he had. And he raised five children. I raised two, raising the second one now. And the challenge of being a parent I don't, and, and and looking back on the humble circumstances, and we felt rich. My parents did a fantastic job. The only reason I'm in politics, Cora, mm -hmm. is because of my parents. My mother, my mother is such a servant all of my life. My mother... Right now, where they live in Diego Martin, there's a guy that comes and closes their gate at night to get his food. They hire the humblest people to work with them in the yard. All of my life, I've known people like this one is Junior and that one is Floyd and that one is, is, is what was his name? Sergeant. Private. Private. And Private was half mad. And, and, but my parents, especially and especially my mother, my mother, because of her, I did a life in the spirit seminar at the age of 19. I was the youngest covenant member of the Living Water community, just to make my mother happy because I was I was running off the rails as a teenager. I was running off the rails, and and what do you mean by running off the rails? Come now, man. You, no, you, no, 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 no. Well, 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 you hear my voice. I strong, you know. People has come at me, but it's come at me. I want to ask you. People has come at me from fire. Don't leave people. Don't leave people. Don't leave people to finish. Finish your conversation. I'm telling you, people, people who, who want to come at me, they don't come close. You could tell that I am strong. You could tell that I have a strong mind, and that when the options presented themselves to be. A teenager. I was a teenager. I party hard. We fight in panorama. I want to 
my mother I, want to, this, I want to share this with you my love you see the, the reason why i i out here supporting young politicians is because in all we are doing with politics and trying to run the country we are leaving young people out so I'm, I have you here as a teacher to help mold the young people and to keep them in line. We have an interview here today and we, our interview is full of love. No, I understand. No, I understand why I call it your mama Coco. All right, I get it now. I get yes. it. Now. Yes. I I I I'm not here to to hear about, you know. No, no, no. I I understand what you say. What it's, politics it's, it's, is what politics is to the adults what politics should be because we are we are in politics for the children the children of Digo martin they need you they need to vote for you and they want to know why they should and the as children of love until no you you give me i'm giving you it the children of love until they are forgotten they decide not to go to school and we don't care Things happening in Laventil, we don't care. When last have you been to Laventil? This week, I still work. I still work Laventil. I still work Long Life Mufflers. I ain't talking about that. When last you went Laventil to do something? No, I just went to drop somebody. I just went to drop somebody. To no, pay. no, forget dropping people. When last have you been to Laventil to meet with young people? and to help them deal with their problem and to work out their problems in Laventille and to change the dynamics around Laventille and to change the, the idea that if I want to prove myself, I have to just go and treat Laventille people, the young yeah. people, yeah, the way they're people, showing themselves. I have people with me that whose job it is to, to say, you can go here, you can go there. I have two police officers and no, they tell no, me no. That Police officers in Lavantale. Well, that they, that they, and you tell me, don't say that, so I won't say it. Don't you say it. I want you to tell me. You, no, but Philip people, Alexander. People say, people say one the thing. Prime Minister that, the Prime Minister that you... I want to walk in Lavantale. I, I want yes, to walk in Lavantale. You have to go to Lavantale. I want to walk in Bitam. And people just tell me, um, here might be safe and here might be dangerous. But when i outside, and, and a lot of people from the most grassroots communities, they know me as gunman. Because I end up with this thing, with this song, and it, 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 gunman. You will get to that. That gunman in the hole, that? I just say. So that I do song? not feel, and I have never Is felt. Is that the song? Yeah. Gunman yeah. in you. That's not my song, right? to me, that was And then you tell me why you like it. Uh, why right I now. like it? Not right now. That is a story, but it wasn't me liking it that ended me up in it, you know. It was me. Philip, you went to St. Mary's College. Let us go back to St. Mary's College. The significant things in my life were experiences of meeting people. Father Dick was my first dean, and he became friendly with the family. Very straightforward, interesting guy. He was the first dean to beat me. And that, <laughs> that, that, that was surprising. You mean beat corporal punishment? Lex, Lex, proper Lex, because I was small, eh? I was small in St. Mary's. I, for the first two years at St. Mary's, I was very small. And people used to take advantage, but I was not weak. So I would fight back. I don't know what happened there to your screen. You, you just had a... Mama, I'm not hearing your audio. I'm not hearing you. I'm not, I wasn't, I'm still not hearing you. I'm not hearing, I'm not hearing you. As your role as a social activist and your work with Jericho Project prepared you for politics and leadership. People just trying to call me while I'm doing this, Cindy. 
I think I I um, I was getting a call from. You need. What? Yeah. When you're and, using um, when you're using yes. your phone, and I'm just saying this so you can tell your daughter when you're using your phone, she can teach you this that you go into your phone. And yes, and stop forward, the notification. I didn't forward. do that today. Oh, okay. Well, you can. And I apologize, ma'am. You yes, can't yes, get ahead of me. I just learned that. I yes, just learned yes, it's because we were doing this and doing that. I didn't go yeah. in and block notification. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Um, so, you know, our live already passed 35 minutes. And we are getting into the politics because the reason why I want you to, was to go back into that state is because I want to tell young people that it's a process and it's not a quick fix. It's not seeing you now and believing that you are who you are and it just took five years or six years. You have to be molded. You have to be grounded. You have to grow up knowing that there are things that you have to do as a child, as a teenager, and a, 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 as an adult. So we're moving and we're going upwards because I want people to know. I want people to know Philip Alexander. Your life experiences will mold you and other young people. We're not on the show so people could get something to go and to say, if you're here, if you're here, Cora, or if you're here, Philip, no, we're not on that. This life is supposed to make you into the person that you want to become. Because right now, every other act that you do, people can predict you and predict what you will come with. You see, you are, you are out there a long time. And you're not out there as a politician alone. You have been working with government. Tell me if you ever have. Tell me which political party that you have ever worked with before. There's a lot of things you have to answer here. You have to tell me about Gary Griffith. You have to tell me if you and he ever went to school. If you ever worked with him. If you ever work with Kamala Bisesa, there's a lot of questions coming up for you. So we don't want to jump the gun. And we don't want to stay too labored on any one question. Because we have a lot to get to. We have to get to your party now. The state of your party. You have some dissidents going on in your party. We want to talk a little bit about that. We want to talk about... We want to... Let me look at the screen. We want to talk about how you're handling yourself. We want to talk about the language that you use. We want to talk about the people that you are drawing or the people that are rejecting you because they don't understand you. I want to introduce you to the people of Tobago. I understand that you, will, you want to contest Tobago, but we have a conversation to have. I want to ask you, have you ever been to Tobago? Have you ever campaigned in Tobago? Is so, that the question? No. These are all the questions and more. You have people messaging me and saying, be gentle. This is not <laughs> a time to be strong. <laughs> but Mama Coco, I want to tell you something. Calm down, just calm, just stay calm. Don't I've, worry. I, what people no, I already said about you, they say about you. What I, you do now from today it, will make you into who you want to be. Because see, right but, now, right now I'm telling you, the system of Trinidad and Tobago and the cultural specimen that we've seen in Trinidad and Tobago, that can't help young people. I am not the enemy, you know. No. So you're going to handle me with you care and attention. Absolutely. You're going to touch me gentle because I'm here to touch you gentle but very stringent. We have to get to the point. I want to know why people could be listening to so much politics from you. And still. And still. 
the crowd not fastening. Are you a solid rock? Because people want to fasten to a rock. So what made you choose to start a new political party? Because I know you, you should tell us first, have you ever been a PNM? I voted for Keith Rowley in 2007, even though I was a member of the Congress of the People. You voted him to get into as a senator or no, no, no. a representative? Uh, in, in my constituency, Diego Martin West, Keith Rowley and Rocky Garcia were the options. And Rocky Garcia was not an option to me then. So the lesser of the two evils then, because I was a member of the Congress of the People, and this was... This was you were a member of the Congress of the People. Damn. Under whose government? No, no, no. The Congress of the People was a party. I actually... Oh, a party. Yeah. I actually left the Congress of the People when they joined with the UNC to form the People's Partnership. I only went back into the Congress of the People when Vernon de Lima had an interview on TV6 one morning with Fazir Mohammed and told the Prime Minister, this is not what the people signed up for. And he was a senior member of the COP, so I went back. Because I thought, well, okay, if the party's standing up for principle, then I will go back. Um, but so I vote. Who's COP? You know, the Congress of the people was. They are was, the ones that joined with Sister Kamala Bissessa to form. Yeah, but, yeah, but what, what begat the Congress of the people was the fallout between Dukaran and Pandey, and then that gathered all of the floating voters who are neither PNM or UNC, and they all joined up with the COP. And people who are neither fish nor fowl in Trinidad. Did you join with? Did you join the COP? Did, did you move with the COP and form the alliance with? No, when the COP, when the COP joined with the UNC to form the People's Partnership, I became an independent. I started a blog called Plain Talk, mm -hmm. which my show is named Plain Talk now. But my blog, Plain Talk, was the most viewed, most published. It led to me having columns in The Guardian and The Express every week, big story, and then a full-time column, guest columnist, and then full-time columnist in the TNT Mirror twice a week, weekend and weekday edition. It was, I had decided then that we had no option in Trinidad because we in the Congress of the people saw the PNM and the UNC as two sides of the same cancer. And then to, to choose a cancer, to me, seemed disingenuous and hypocritical. So I stepped out because we wanted to, we still want to try and build a party on principle and on ethics and on all inclusion. And the PNM and the UNC, by their nature, are not all inclusive. I had to vote for Keith Rowley in 2007 to make a point to my party that the same oh. stupidness that the PNM oh. doing today so remember you're teaching people today that you didn't vote for Keith Rowley because of policies. Listen to me. And this is what we are here for. This is why I this is why I say I'm gonna interview you because I want people to start to learn what and why do you vote. <laughs>